the actual drama that happens in real estate, yeah. the, the people at home couldn't even handle. You know, whenever you turn on Selling Sunset, like the most dramatic thing that happens is like maybe someone gets a parking ticket. And as soon as I realized like I would stage, it wasn't fun for me. Manny. Back at it. Last week, um, last week we live reacted to yeah. Netflix. Something I never thought we'd do in a serious real estate discussion, but I guess it's not a serious real estate discussion. It doesn't always have to be, but- I'm not a serious guy. So. I've noticed that about you. <laughs> I think everyone at home has as well. It's like, man, the other guy talks a lot about real estate. The yeah, other guy just, just kind of smiles. Yeah, and... man, I mean, that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> That easygoing attitude is something I hope to adopt someday. Uh, someday soon, actually. Um, when we were reacting to that stuff, one thing that I did say that I've mm. thought about since then was that given that a lot of them are staged, right? Uh, or scripted. Scripted. Yeah, that's a good word. Um, uh, they're, you know, very heavily massaged by the producers or whatever to say certain things or behave in certain ways or to act out certain scenarios. It made me realize the actual drama that happens in real estate yeah the, the people at home couldn't even handle especially some of your stories i i i mean i mean i've, I've told you a lot of them i don't yeah. know if i've told you all of them but i've told you a lot of them and i, I and just stuff you can't even make up like you just yeah but, but i also think that the reason that like the producers don't come up with like uh juicier ideas is because they just don't know what real estate agents do yeah and so, um, gosh, what's like, what's one of my wildest stories? Well, let me just get, okay. I'm dressed a little more formally than I normally would be. Okay. You want to tell me I'm, that? I'm way upstaging you. I yeah. mean, uh, and it's, uh, it well, you makes, have good reason though. Yeah. So I spent uh, a good hour this morning, um, testifying in court or giving, giving witness testimony mm. in court. Uh, over a receivership case yeah. uh, that, uh, you know, so, um, and that's, I have a feeling that like 99% of the audience at home is like, what is that? What? Okay. So sometimes we don't sell property on behalf of like a traditional seller. Uh, sometimes uh, we are, we list houses on behalf of a receiver, which right. is someone, just imagine, I'm just gonna get, this isn't necessarily what's happening in this yeah. scenario, but let, I'll just give you a scenario. Look, let's say that there's a really contentious divorce, mm -hmm. okay? Husband and wife are not getting along, they can't agree on a division of the assets, yeah. right? So what they might do is they'll have their attorneys fight it out, and if they can't like come to some sort of agreement, what happens is the court will appoint someone called a receiver, yeah. and that receiver basically receives the, the, the property of those people. Not necessarily just the real estate, but a lot of other property. I'm not a lawyer, by the way, so I'm not going to get into right. the, the full. So no legal advice all. here. Yeah, yeah. There's no legal advice happening here. We'll put the flashing thing in the bubble. <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, the the attorney or the the judge will come to uh, a point where they're like, okay, look, work the the court is going to appoint someone to go out and liquidate the assets yeah. and then we'll divide them in court. Um, so it's sort of a last ditch effort. And so, and we've done, I don't know, six or seven of them. Yeah. You did that one, the uh, one in, in, Dallas. Uh, in Dallas. Yeah. So, um, so we've got one in Plano right now and I had to go sit on the stand before a judge and three attorneys and uh, a gallery, including uh, one of the people whose house it used to be. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, make the case for what we price the property as, uh, how right. we marketed it. And um, I just think that, you know, whenever you turn on Selling Sunset, like the most dramatic thing that happens is like maybe someone gets a parking ticket. <laughs> like she said oh, yeah. something mean about- Or one person's talking about, about another, and then finally they all get a dinner table and then they bring it up. Yeah, and I'm like, is that really that juicy? Some people love that though. A lot of people do, and I, I get it. Like they're beautiful. These yeah. beautiful, beautiful plastic women. Um, <laughs> and like, I mean, I I guess I I get it. But like, how many times? I remember. Okay, there used to be a show. I cannot remember the name of the show. I think it was on the Travel Channel. But like, they would they would tow people's cars. Oh yeah, uh, they would repo them, and then they had like those. Uh... Those two big guys. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like these dramatic scenes. And I remember I was like, this is crazy. How have I never heard about this? And I was watching, I was really young. 
And I was watching it and watching it, I just couldn't get enough of it. And then I realized, like, it, it hit me. I was like, that's not. It's not real. Yeah, that's not like how <laughs> I would react. Like, yeah. that's not how most people would react. And like, you know, inevitably on these shows, like you get some bad actors sometimes. And I finally was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then as soon as I realized, like I went stage, it wasn't fun for me anymore. Mm. That's how Selling Sunset is for me. That's why I can never get behind it. Cause like I would see some of the trailers around TikTok and stuff. Yeah. I was like, this is so fake. Yeah, it's not. So anyway, like, so like, I guess my point is like the real drama is so much crazier. So I remember um, a couple of years ago, I, uh, I had, I had this client um, who I, I, I really liked him. He would come into our, our old office yeah. like uh, every year around the same time. And uh, he would come in to, to get help protesting his taxes, yeah. um, which is another thing we do that I don't think people know about. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the protesting property taxes. <laughs> We're just pretty. We just go into houses and make millions of dollars, right? So, uh, but, but anyway, he, he came in every year. And then this one year, like, he didn't come in. So you knew something was off or like, yeah. was like that's weird. And so I, I reached out, I, I, I called him uh, and he didn't respond. I, I had his email address. I sent him an email and the email kicked back, but he had, he was working for the University of North Texas. He was a professor. Okay. And so the email kicked back and I was like, oh, he must have retired. Yeah. He was, you know, he was an older guy. Yeah. I mean, so, you went there too. Yeah. So he didn't, he didn't respond to that. And so I was like, I'm just gonna go like knock on his door. So I knocked on his door and he went there. So I went and I put a letter. I wrote a letter and I put it in an envelope and I door. taped it to yeah. his front door. And uh, he, he he never responded. But I, I drove by the house for three or four days and the letter was still taped to the door. And I was like, oh, maybe he goes into the garage. I'm making excuse right. after excuse yeah. after excuse for why he's not there. And then two months go by. I get a call. And it's from uh, a Corpus Christi number, which is where I'm from. Okay. So I answer the phone. It's his daughter. And she Did said, you know they're from Corpus? I didn't. Or was it some random phone number? I had no idea. Okay. I had no idea. So I just ran, you know, it was a local area code, so I figured I knew him. So um, it was his daughter, and she was like, my father passed away. I think you knew him. Um, wow. I found your letters. Oh and, my uh, gosh. you know, we need to sell the house. I'm curious if you can come and meet me. And, at um, Corpus? No, at the, oh, at the, at the house at the she had come up. And so I went and looked at the at the house and, and helped, helped sell that house. But that's not the craziest thing that happened. As would have it, houses that are vacant, I don't know why. Yeah. Houses, that, houses like to have people living in them. Houses have feelings. Yeah. And houses like to have people that live in them. People, this is the, let's put the woo-woo filter on that because like oh. it's like, houses have feelings. When people leave, when, when houses are vacant, they act up. They Stuff happens, act up. they act up. So of course, the toilet downstairs in this house starts gushing sewage. <clears throat> so we call a local plumber that I knew, we got it solved. Guess who went and vacuumed up the sewage in the carpet for the next three or four hours at midnight? That's good. Yeah, that's, that's the good. real drama. Yeah. That's the real drama. Like no one came and said that my significant other was ugly and you uh -huh. know, I didn't break a nail. That's what happened. And that's just one of the many. There's so many stories. I mean, the- Well, like, like today you did, you, uh, you forgot to mention that the wife was like yelling at the other room or something. Oh yeah, so during the court case. Uh, Back to the receiver. Actually, shit. actually, it was after the court case. So when the court case ended, it, you know, it's, County court is not as formal as like law and order SVU. Okay. <laughs> but um, the the judge basically said, okay, we're off the record. And that's like, you know, meeting adjourned, court, yeah. court, uh, yeah. uh, court adjourned or whatever. So she, 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 uh, the judge is like packing her stuff up. All the lawyers are packing their papers and getting ready to leave. The gallery is standing up and, you know, about to exit and let the rest of the, right. the next case come in. Yeah. And all of a sudden this woman, I didn't know who she was. This woman. Oh, you never met the. No, yeah. no. Why would I? Yeah, that's true. So this woman uh, comes up. She's standing, you know, as right. close as, as as you are to me right now. And she's like, uh, she was talking to the lawyer, and she was like, "You've let my property fall into disrepair, and there's a tree that's fallen down in the front yard, and you need to you need to cut that down." And it was like, "Who are you?" 
it was also just so unhinged because like just imagine like your house is like falling apart like yeah. toothpicks are holding it up and you uh, go up to someone and be like my toaster is on the fritz and like you're gonna do something about it <laughs> you need it. to fix it's that like like you gotta need to get your priorities order but anyway the point is um yeah, it's drama. It's re but it's real drama. Yeah. That's real drama. This isn't Judge Judy. And that's just today. That's, that's just today. 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 happened today. Um, so you know, it, it's the stories have culminated over my career, and and I don't think I've had a, a more vivacious career than a lot of people. I think it's been somewhat typical. Yeah. And so I'm just like, I can't imagine the stories that the other 600 agents have in this building. Just in this building. Just in this building. Um. I was thinking about like the, like the fifth transaction I ever did. So was, you're brand new, just started. I'm pretty new at that yeah. point. I was pretty new. I think I had three listings before that I had sold, and so you know I was feeling. Got a little good. momentum going. I was feeling pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and I went and I got this uh, this <laughs> this older woman and her adult son who lived with her. Okay. Father forward slash husband had left them. I would later find out why. They told me that they uh, they needed to move because quote the Mexicans were taking all of the jobs. Wow. End quote. And this is you, freshly still new. Yeah. By the way, I was dating a Hispanic person at the time. Had been for like three years. So anyway, it was like I'm oh, okay. I'm sure that caught you off guard. It really did. It could, because, you know, I just, like, I was a brand new realtor. Yeah. I just, like, raised my right hand and got my little realtor pen and said, yeah. I'll abide by all the code of ethics. I'll be a good little realtor. And, like, everything had been pretty textbook up right. until that point. And so them saying that to me, I was like, oh, I don't know what to say. Um, Not too speechless. It really did. And so I, I I probably, I don't know, uncomfortable left. I don't remember what I said. Right. Um, but so they said that. That was their reason for moving. And I, at that point, I saw it as my um duty right. to get them out of my state as efficiently as possible mm -hmm. so um anyway uh they um they ended up having uh, a bunch of vendors that they hadn't paid for work on their house like the roof for example oh, and so right. when all those vendors saw the sign go in the yard saw my for sale sign go in mm -hmm. the yard they all started calling and like filing liens yep. and so these people already didn't have a ton of money yeah. and and then that happened. And then, um, like, so the people that ended up buying the house, by the way, spoke not a word of English. Of course, they were, they were, they were. I mean, they they spoke Spanish. Right. Put it that way. That's okay. Yeah. Um, so um, I believe their last name was Moreno. Moreno. And so, <laughs> as fate would have it. So anyway, we come to terms on a contract and everything. And then, so I don't know if you know this, like. The government won't just give you money to buy a house. Right. You, they you, they have to verify that the house is worth what you're paying for it. Yeah. Right. And so they send out someone called an appraiser Praise. to appraise the house. Well, the appraiser that showed up to that house that day had the audacity to ride a motorcycle. Is that crazy? Do you think it's crazy? I mean, I feel like there's more to it, but I wouldn't think so. The appraiser rode up on a motorcycle, and my sellers thought this was like there's a gangster oh, that has arrived at the house to murder us. It's the worst. So they were calling you like, "Hey, what is this?" Oh, uh, they were here? calling. They were they, it, it, the appraiser was in front of them, and they yeah. were calling me on the phone, and they're like, "Like this guy, like is <laughs> this, <laughs> this unprofessional, guy. crazy yeah. person? Like this is the person that's determining the the value you. of the house. house that they're trying to sell." So, like, not the person to upset. Right. Um, and I'm not saying that, re that appraisers can be swayed, yeah. but... We're all human at the end of the day, though. You can certainly make their job easier. Yeah. Uh, sure. So, anyway, we were, I think, at that time, this, it used to be able to buy a pretty nice house for $225,000, and that's Dang. what this house was in contract for. He appraised it at two fifteen. dollars Shock. So, this was, of course, my fault. It's always our fault. This was my fault. We finally get to the closing. I can't believe we got it closed, but we finally got to the closing. And uh, the buyers did not do a final walkthrough. Which should do a final walkthrough. They should have. Every time. Yeah. All the time. They didn't do a final walkthrough. They walked in after the closing. Money, like we had already closed. The other side wire closed. Transfers. The wire had been sent. 
the deal was over. And they walked in and they realized that the built-in microwave had been taken, the thermostat had been taken, the stove and range had been taken, several of the doorknobs had been taken, all of the light bulbs had been taken. And you had no clue. I know, I know, I had no idea. Yeah. So she called me and she was like, what can we do? And I was like, um, nothing. So, so, so the, the recourse at that point, um, at that point there was genuinely nothing that we, that, that, that the real estate company, the real estate right. agent, us could do. I mean, it, it, it was, oh, it that was, was like over. a legal matter. It right? was over. At that point, what they could have done, what this, this, the, the buyers could have done is sued the sellers for what's called specific performance, mm -hmm. meaning abide by the contract. Because in the contract, yeah, it, it says, stays with us. Right. It's, it's like in the first couple of paragraphs. So, um, by the way, no, le we're not getting legal advice. Yeah, no legal advice. I'm just saying, like that's, <laughs> that would have been their only recourse is to right. take it to court. So I don't believe they ever did. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's just like the fifth transaction. So just pair that with like everything that happened today, my Were you a solo agent away. at that time? Was I what? Solo agent? Um, I think I had just joined, joined a team. team. I think I had just joined a team. Still though, that's... that's yeah, in fact, I know, in fact, I know I did. Yeah. Because they, they stole, they probably mangled, destroyed the sign that was in the yard and my lead agent was not very pleased that she lost a sign. It's your fault. My fault again. <laughs> it's always my fault. It's always my fault. Hey. You live and you learn, though. But again, that's just. What do you think, though? I mean, do you agree? Like the like the real drama is so much more. I don't know if it's as sexy. Definitely not as sexy. Or, yeah, vacuuming you know, sewage. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't tell you those those clients I was talking about the the ones that needed to move away from the Mexicans. Um, they also attempted to saw my Supra lockbox off of the door handle. Wow. And they weren't able to saw through it. Great commercial for the Supra. Yeah. Um, so they're they, expensive though. They're like, they're like 130 bucks. And so they ended up uh, taking the entire door handle off of the door and they threw it in the front yard. God bless. Just left a gaping hole in the door yeah. for the new buyers. No doorknob. I mean, a lot of, I feel like a lot of that could have been prevented if they did the final walkthrough, mm -hmm. which again, but you're the seller's agent, not the buyer's. Yeah. That was mistake number one. Yeah, I don't think there's anything more more that I could have done. To, yeah, I mean, it was it was a very contentious deal. It, it didn't have to be. The buyers were extremely sweet people, by the way. I feel I sympathize with them. Right, I do. Um, technically, my fiduciary was to the sellers, but the sellers definitely didn't make them. They didn't make themselves easy to root for. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that would I know that was tough. And you're just starting out, like, man, what did I get myself into? So it's not sexy drama. No, it's not. But it's more, it's ugly, I think it's more dramatic. It's ugly, real drama. I think it's more dramatic. Very more, much dramatic. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, and then you have that other story. The one I want to get into is the whole sending $400,000 to a Nigerian oh, prince. Oh, yeah. That wasn't like our that. clients, uh, but uh, we we had the listing. Yeah. This wasn't too long ago. We had a listing. Again, on the seller's side. And our sellers really needed to sell. Like, yeah. they, they were in a position, well, you know, it, it happens. Like, you get to a point where a house is too much. It's too much house. It's too mm -hmm. much payment. It's too much maintenance. And you're just like, I got to get out of here, right? Um, and our clients were kind of in that scenario. Yeah. I don't think they'd mind me saying that. Um, they wanted to get out of it. And so uh, we were able to get it in contract for a price they were willing to, to take. And, and we had done the right. negotiation. Appraisal Everything was happened. going good. Everything was great. Night before closing. Night before closing. The it's buyer, always right before closing. Right before closing. The buyer gets an email from what she thinks is the an older lady, uh, who she gets an email from who she thinks is the title company. Wow. And the type the email is like, hey, wire your money to uh, to this account and this routing number and everything, and she did. And that turned out to be uh, a scammer in Nigeria. For four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, FBI was able to recover. I think one hundred three thousand. The other 297,000 is gone forever. Ruined their life. Yeah. And I mean, obviously not to that to that uh, point, but also your sellers as well. Because they were yeah, about to temporarily, close. Temporarily, yeah, temporarily. I mean, my sellers were distraught. Really distraught. Really unfortunate yeah. event. Dang, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, the only other deal that's kind of coming to mind right now is I had one uh, really, really, really Nice neighborhood in Frisco, and uh, these people had just destroyed this house. They had ripped the carpet out. It you were the nice. listing agent. On yeah, that. they had already moved to another property, um, and they just kind of like left their 
their their house in shambles. They want a top dollar for it because right. that's always how it works out. Like, always. hey, we destroyed it, get us the most money that's <laughs> ever been gotten in yeah. the neighborhood, like like break records. And like, oh, okay, I was really trying hard for them. I even like staged it for them. Wow! But it had concrete floor. I mean, they had pulled up the carpet. Like, so it's just yeah. Yeah, we're not talking Fair stained floor. concrete. Yeah. We're talking like it's like oh, it's like a basketball court. <laughs> um, so uh, it it wasn't it wasn't cute. No. And um, I found out uh, after about a month of trying to help them and them being really aggressive with me, like you're not doing enough. Uh, of course, I'm not. It's my fault. It's your fault. Um, I found out they had. Uh, like mortgage liens on the property. It was being foreclosed. It was in foreclosure. Yeah. They didn't, you're supposed to disclose, supposed to disclose that. There's actually a whole bunch of things in listing agreements that are like, my property is not currently in foreclosure. I'm not currently delinquent on late. And so they were trying to come after me. Uh, they threatened to pursue me with a lawyer and everything. And I just kind of politely was like, you lied. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to send what I what, the what, So what ended up happening is I sent them a termination of listing. And I was like, this releases all parties of like liability. So mm -hmm. I suggest, yeah, I'm not giving legal advice. No. I was like, I suggest, Ooh. I suggest you sign this. And they did. Yeah. And the second they signed it, I got my sign lock box off the house. And, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't think. But well, sometimes, like you said, it's just better to walk away. It's just sometimes it is, but I, another thing that I don't think it's talked about enough is sometimes we'll do all of the work. All of the work. All of the work. Yeah. And we never get paid. All the time. Never made and a energy, dime. Yeah. Never made it done. Yeah. Literally all that time and effort. I mean, we listed the whole thing. We did the whole thing, paid for photography. Marketing strategy, staged photography, it. staged it. Did the whole nine yards. Because that's not cheap either, staging it. No. And offer it to... Euro dollars. I mean, negative, if you yeah. just consider the money we spent. But I mean, again, I think for agents too, you have to make that tough decision where like, hey, this is not even worth it. Well, sometimes you also have to go and screw up a bunch of stuff to know what not to do. True. Now I know. Yeah. After 10 years, I, I hope you know. I'm still making mistakes. That is true. I'm still making mistakes. Um, it's, you know, real estate's a business where you can't be afraid of failure. You just have to fail yeah. fast, fail fail often, and fail forward. Don't well, also, fail so yeah. badly you take yourself out. Well, also this industry too is constantly evolving with like new rules, regulations, stuff like that, where, you know, you're gonna make a mistake no matter what. There's a type of person that's not going to do very well in real estate, and that's the type of person that like has to know everything before they do everything. You'll never know everything. And the yeah. second you figure it all out, they'll change it. They'll change it. Think about how many times it's changed just since you've been in. Been in oh, about yeah. three years. Yeah. I mean, every month it seems like something else is new, or something else came up. Yeah, it's constant. We got to use a new form constant or a new change. agreement. Constant change. But I mean, and, and there is like actually agent drama too, you know, where when we were at another location, we just got another agent from yeah. a different team. Yeah. And you had to file a whole cease assist or whatever. Yeah, and, and so uh, we had an agent join our team. And uh, what we found out was that the team that that agent had left right. was calling his personal, that you're really supposed to like separate the, like like people when they leave, there, there's yeah. an agreement in place of like when they leave, like they take their, their yeah. database with them or you That's know. That's how it should be, right? Yeah, you you, leave, you, like, it should be like, if you leave, like, I, that's, that's my opinion, like, I like, I'm not going to take your mom as a lead, yeah. right? Like, even though she was in my database, like, you, I mean, Miss Taralba, that's, it's all, it's all, you know, that's yours. That's yours. <laughs> so, um, but you know, if there were deals that I gave to you, it's right. like, okay, well, those are, those are mine, yeah. right? So, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's a fair division. Yeah. It usually is. And, you know. But there is certain, like, some gray area, depending sure, on Sure, sure. Yeah. You know, people get their feelings involved. Um, but regardless, like there should be something in writing. Well, what happened to this agent is mm -hmm. that he left that team and that team started cold calling his database, his, whole saying, database. his entire database, including his mom, literally his mom and some of his preferred vendors and saying something to the effect of, Hey, um, this agent is no longer in real estate. Yeah. How can we help you with your transaction instead? And those people. And they knew he like, he yeah, just, he just went over to another team. Yeah. But. Those people were like, what? And so all those people were telling him, like, hey, hey what's going on? Is this here? true? Yeah. Um, and so uh, we, we we had to help the, the agent. And what ended up happening is he sent them a cease and desist letter. Um, and presumably they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, all, it's all water under the bridge at this point. But uh, you know, there's that's 
there's a right way to handle drama. Yeah. There's a legal process for handling it, drama. There's a policy. Sometimes there's policy and procedure manuals in place. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes human resources. If it's that sort of situation, it's just like there's a process. And I think what frustrates me is that when there's a process, you should use it. Yeah. Because that's what. It's that's why it's there for. Yeah. That's what. Um, and so you know, we've been accused. I've been accused in the past. Of many of, things. So many things. <laughs> but like. But sometimes I'm just following the process. Yeah. Like, this is the process. We all agree. Why can't we just do the process? So, again, my fault. Man, you're really. Uh, We're gonna get a my fault camp. Yeah. Yeah. You're really screwing up right now. I'm. I'm. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> as, you are the, as the problem. Swifties would say. You're the problem. I'm the problem. But I mean, yeah, like just like any office, there's just so many people. Drama's bound to happen, Personalities, but a lot opinions. of it's a lot of it's petty stuff, though. Oh yeah, you can't get worked up about everything. You've got to choose your battles. Wisely. Choose where you're going to spend your energy. Yeah, very wisely, because you can get wrapped up. Because you're already being stretched out so thin sometimes. It's where... worse than middle school. Yeah, for sure. Middle school, you knew when the, the you knew who the good kids and the bad kids were. In real estate, it's questionable. You never know from day to day. You never know. Yeah, but I mean, just like anything else, like when there's money involved, you really see people's true colors once it comes down it's even to worse it. worse when there's no money involved. Really? And sometimes that's the case in real estate. <laughs> people who have made no money, don't know how to make any money, don't know how to manage their money, yeah. but have all the opinions in the world about how you should be doing business.